block. Back to throw. Sets, throws, batted down, intercepted! Mateo Iangalele with the interception off a tipped ball. That was a call as heard right here on the fans. Saturday night, Mateo Uyunglele getting the interception to seal the Ducks. 16-13 victory over the Wisconsin Badgers. That was a heck of a football game. It was ugly. It was kind of a gritty, grimy game. Kind of. That game was not a fun game to watch. No, it wasn't. It, it, it was ugly not. a football game. But... Defensively, both teams played really stinking well, man. He's gonna go get him one of those Milwaukee butter hogs. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, as another uh, observation, a lot of Wisconsin, a lot of Packers love. Mm. No Milwaukee Bucks love anywhere. Ooh, you don't see Bucks stuff anywhere. I saw more advertisements for Flannel Fest than I did. To be fair, Bucks flannel, very, very, very. That was flannel very fest. fashionable. Kind of sounds like a kick, uh, kick-ass time. Yeah, it was Saturday as well. Yeah. It was, it was, flannel fest was on Saturday in Madison, so double booked. A lot of people double booked yeah. on Saturday. Lots of, lots of lots of log rolling, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, look, <laughs> look, as somebody who lived in the region, flannel, the number one pattern. Yeah, yeah, it was it was a big day for flannel. It's uh, it's it's a, it's a warm thing. To, like even look, even though it was very organy there, I bet you there was a lot of folks in that there crowd with a lot of flannel on. Uh, you they, forget they call. It Oregoni, yeah, Oregon. Um, but people were great. Um, all the Big Ten cities have been awesome. Mm. You know, they've been uh, well. It's only been like West Lafayette and Michigan, and now Madison. Looks slightly. I don't count LA. Yeah, I mean that's that's different. But no, the the, the traditional Big Ten, yeah. especially when you're talking about like the smaller cities, like mm-hmm. N- Northwestern and Rutgers are the only ones that are actually like in big cities, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like they they all have that feel. Yeah, they do. It was it, they're it was very cool city, great people out there, but it, there was a lot of flannel. It was cold. Yeah. yeah I mean, it the because air the wind temperature is ripping through you. The air temperature was 45 degrees, mm-hmm. but with the wind chill, like there was they said it was gusts of up to 29 miles. It was constant wind mm-hmm. throughout the entire game. And this is something that I I don't we talked about it a lot on the radio broadcast, but uh, from what I've heard and from what I heard in, in the condensed version, it wasn't discussed a lot on the television broadcast was how much the wind was playing a factor in that game. And that led to the offensive struggle or defensive kind of prowess that we saw in that game. Because if you look at the box score by quarter, you will notice that Oregon scored in only the first and fourth quarter Wisconsin only scored in the second and third quarter that is because all of the points were scored in one end zone with the wind with the wind the wind was howling so if you're watching on tv the right side of the field is where nobody got in the red zone Mm -hmm. at it was the wind was at your back if you were moving from right to left Mm -hmm. and on the opening coin toss when Oregon got to select which side they kicked from to Wisconsin, th- I think it was Jamari Caldwell. He goes, wherever we want our back to our locker room <laughs> because that's where the wind was coming from was that way. So they wanted to kick with the wind so they could have advantage going into in the, the fourth, end zone yeah. in the first quarter. So you could get points early because it was the American flag, the Big Ten flags at the top of the stadium. They were pinned. Yeah, the entire game. I mean, it was a constant wind going across the field from right to left. If you're watching on TV, and the way the game played out, you saw that the defenses were more aggressive. They were loading the box. If you were moving from left to right and going into the wind, they just said, well, "I dare you to throw the ball downfield." And the Terrence Ferguson, when he tripped on the wide open ball downfield that Dylan mm-hmm. Gabriel and him almost connected on, that ball went up into the air and you're watching it going, it just like was kind of like sitting Stuck. in the air. And so he was trying to adjust to the ball. He trips and falls. The reason why Terrence Ferguson's wide open is because the box was loaded. Mm-hmm. They were say they were daring you to throw the football down the field in that direction. So offenses that we're going up against, and one thing that we knew about both these teams defensively was that they were good going into this game, right? Wisconsin has one of the best pass defenses in the country heading into this game. 
But at the same time, the offense is also almost playing one-handed when you're going into the wind because of the fact that you can't really push the ball down the field. Yeah. You, the, the, you were very limited in what you could do. And I asked Lanning about it after the game, and you know he gave the most Lanning response possible is that would be an excuse when we don't make excuses, right? We both had to play with it. Blah, blah, blah. Both had to play with it. But when you look at it, one touchdown is one end zone is where all of the points were scored yeah. in. <laughs> and you and you look at Wisconsin, they weren't able to put anything together except for in those two occasions. And you look at they were you could say they were really bad and Oregon was really good on third downs. Oregon's defense was very good and Wisconsin's offense did mm-hmm. things because they couldn't push the ball at all. Like no. it, their entire offense was Walker. Yeah, I mean, and he, he to be fair, he was very good. Yeah, uh, he's a good back, man. I mean, look, it's Wisconsin. <laughs> they, they do two things really well. Yep. They have very large white men up and down the roster, and they have good running backs. Like that's that's it. Doesn't matter who's coaching there. That's that's it's like Iowa. You know that you know what you're gonna get year in year out. And you know, Oregon did just enough, and I think that's mm-hmm. that's the, the kind of situation. Like there was plenty of miscues by both teams. Penalties racked up left, right, and center. Boy, weird penalties too. <sighs> Defensive holding—that's a weird one. Uh, okay, that is a call that I don't. You don't see. Okay, defensive holding by a defensive lineman. I've seen it on the edges, right? Yeah. Because what you'll see is like. You'll get an end or an outside backer who's getting double teamed, and then when you know the guard of the tackle is trying to work up to the next level and get to the linebackers, get extended hand. You take out both of them and you hold the guy who's trying to to work up to the next level, so you can get the edge mm-hmm. right. And you you see that the interior defensive line, I, I I don't know if I've ever seen an interior defensive lineman called for defensive holding, and that was that was a weird call. Like I I was. Lord, I, I look. I mean, I only had what two seasons working in the middle of a field in high school football. I never once threw a defensive holding. Yeah, like, like I, I it, it wouldn't even cross my mind. And it, to be it's honest. it's obviously <laughs> something that you know you're like they were they're looking aware for, of. Yeah, so they were aware of. Wisconsin 100 percent was campaigning for. That's the only way that flag gets. Thrown. There, there's a a new uh, shameless pod plug. A new episode of the program pod. Cole Linehan, my co-host, he was a defensive tackle at Oregon. He goes into great detail of that was his greatest strength was keeping linemen off of like that's what yeah. that's what he did is he opened it up for the linebackers to make plays right Look, I mean that's that's most interior defensive tackles unless you're a guy who's a, a Aaron Donald type that draws all this attention and you also are a you know a pass a pass disruptor your job is to eat up blocks and yeah. free up linebackers like that's literally your job is to like to get rid of the plus one. You're you're counterbalancing him by saying, no, you have to put two on me, and when you do put two on me, I'm going to grab the one guy who I know is trying to scoop to the next level. So, <laughs> no. Right. Yeah, no, I'm not going to allow that yeah. to happen. But then we had the, um, what was it, the intentional shift mm-hmm. called on both teams there, where there's a difference between, you know, disconcerting signals yeah. is what you usually see called, which is, on that shift, the defense yells something. Barks something that's and similar. Similar to the snap count, right? That wasn't called. What was called was abrupt shift. Mm-hmm. And uh, both teams got called for it. You see those shifts happen every drive, almost every play in college mm-hmm. football. I don't know why they they were so high on it in that game. Uh, it was th- Those were a couple of Again, head I bet you, I bet you both coaches were... England. Well, especially after Oregon got called for theirs, they were like, "When they do it, you bet yeah. we better get that same call." And they got that call. They they canceled each other out, and we didn't see it again. I, after I think that. that that was a a shot across across the bow for like, guys. <laughs> you guys are you guys are getting a little too close. Like, to let's it. let's everybody knows what you're doing. Yeah, stop it. Yeah, that game was ugly though, and it was grimy. Um, and there's a lot that kind of went into that. And look, uh, if you don't want to just give this complete hey pass on to Oregon of things that weren't concerning in it but you take the things that are the reality right Oregon was playing eight straight conference games no other team in the country went an eight game stretch without a bye week they played two teams coming off of bye weeks in Maryland and Wisconsin that both 
uh, looked ready game, and they were very good in the back ends against Oregon. But there are some things that are of concern. And look, Oregon survived, and winning and surviving is the most important part right there. When your defense can carry you to wins, though, that is the most important thing that you can do. You can't win everything perfect. You can't win anything pretty. And the thing that matters is you get out with a win. Yep. And look, if Wisconsin has, I mean, Braden Locke was not good. He is not. No, he's a backup quarterback yeah. that's forced to start all season long. If they had a little bit more juice, you know, we might have a different story today. But they didn't, and Oregon did just enough. And that's, look, sometimes you need some breaks to go your way. Go look at literally every national champion ever. Mm-hmm. At you, sometimes you just need stuff to kind of go your way, and you know, Oregon had some stuff go their way. It's surviving huh. the mess, but because plenty of teams this weekend didn't. There's one. Oh, there's a lot of teams that didn't, and that is over the last handful of weeks, mm-hmm. and we can get into that. But I think one call that everybody has their head scratching: the aggressiveness of Dan Lanning. Mm. The aggressiveness of Dan Lanning. It did pay off because of the result of that Mateo Uyunglele pick that we just played right there. But there's people that are saying this is going to bite him at some point. 